has been settled yes. long ago. Yes. Long ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we just thank God while you're standing, if you can get your Bibles, and we'll be going to our scripture text, and we'll be going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. I'm going to read that in the King James and in the New, Inter New Living International Version. It says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. The New Living Translation says, so whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, God, for clarity, revelatory knowledge, and wisdom. Lord, I pray that you would anoint the hearers, anoint me, your vessel. Lord, I hide behind the cross. Lord, I cannot do it without you. You are my source of strength. Lord, I want to speak as of the oracles of God. Lord, I thank you, God, for your word and that your word shall not return void. In Jesus' name we pray, and let God's people say amen, amen. and amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, <laughs> you may be seated. That song, <laughs> that song was right on target. You see, our main objective as believers of God is to be pleasing to him. Paul, in this passage of scripture, was sharing, so my desire is that my life might be pleasing to God. While I'm living in this body, and when I ultimately move out of this body, my chief desire was that he wanted to be pleasing to God. In Philippians, when he was saying, he says, whether I'm absent or present, it, it really did not matter, but his main focus was that he wanted to be pleasing to God. He wanted to hear the scripture that was in Matthew 25 to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things that will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So this is what Paul was believing for. Now, since all believers will be judged by Christ and receive the things done in their bodies, whether good or bad, we should put fire under our feet to want to settle our accounts with Jesus Christ now, today, ASAP, as soon as possible. <laughs> Do you agree? This judgment will reward us for how we have lived. God's gracious gift of salvation does not free us from the requirement of faithful obedience. All Christians must give an account on the day of judgment for how they have lived. Matthew 16 and 27 says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Now, while eternal life is a free gift given on the basis of God's grace, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Each of us will still be judged by Christ. This judgment will reward us for how we have lived. God's gracious gift of salvation does not free us from the requirement 
of faithful obedience. Hey, we were saved by grace. We have been forgiven. But it is required of us as believers to be obedient to his word. It is required of us as believers to be faithful and obedient to his word. All Christians must give an account on the day of judgment for how they have lived. Romans 14 and 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So this morning, the title of this message is in the form of a question. Are all your accounts settled? with God? Are all your accounts settled with God? Now, this morning, I will be using some analogies in accounting in light of this message. Most of us here have bank accounts. We have checking accounts, saving accounts. We have money market accounts. We have IRA accounts. And all these accounts, you know, most of the ones that we work with the most are our checking accounts. Now, with the Lord, we can have many accounts as well. The main account with God is our salvation account. The song that was sung just now was talking about the fact that he settled that account with Jesus long ago. All of us who accepted Jesus as our personal Savior, we have settled that account. But there are other accounts that we have. We have a forgiveness account. A count it all joy account. <laughs> a count it all joy account. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? We have so many accounts. Hallelujah. The, the shared abroad account. Hallelujah. So, so we see here that when we use that analogy in light of all the various accounts that we have, checking accounts, savings accounts, our aids, money markets, but in Christ, our first account is our salvation account. Has your account been settled with God? Have you accepted him as your personal savior? Do you believe in the finished work of the cross, his death, his burial, and his resurrection? And if you have, that account has been settled. Yes. Hallelujah. You have escaped and will escape the wrath to come. The only judgment that you're going to receive is the judgment of the works that you have done. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about the fact that uh, only those that are going to be judged based on their names not being written, written in the life, not, uh, life the, the last book of life are those who rejected Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So we see here, for us to open, uh, the, the main account for God, with God, is our salvation account. In order for us to open that account, we must accept the finished work of Jesus Christ that took place on Calvary's cross. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. We can have a forgiveness account, a count it all joy account, a benevolence account, and bless my enemies account, and my love shed abroad account, and the list can go on and on. There are many accounts that we can have in this walk of life. Now, the word account, there's a Greek definition of that. And the Greek definition of account means primarily to be of, of, of opinion. Think, opposed to reckon, whether by calculation or determination. Now, when we look at the Webster Dictionary of Account, it's a statement telling in detail about an event or thing. A statement explaining one's conduct, especially to a superior. A statement of reasons, causes, or the like explaining some event. 
Now, an accountant is a person who examines or manages business accounts. Jesus is our examiner and judge. Now, the account book is a book in which accounts of receipts and expenditures are kept. We can liken that to the book of life. Everything that you've done is going to be written in the book. If your name is not there, <laughs> it's, going to be in, it's going to not be in the book. Now, we have credit. Now, the credit in accounting is the entry of money paid on an account which appears on the right side of the ledger. Now, Romans 8.34b says, Christ, who is even at the right hand of God, making intercessions for us. See, we were on the left side of the cross, but then we came on the, to the right side of the cross. 1 John 2 and 1 says, My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's the one that's seated on the right hand of God, making intercessions for us. First John 1 and 9 states, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are all your accounts settled with God? Now, you know, when we think about confession, when we receive Jesus as our person, personal Savior, we are confessing his death, yeah. his burial, yeah. his resurrection. Yeah. We're accepting his, his forgiveness. We're, we're doing all of that. But the Bible clearly tells us, too, because we are human and because we are subject to make mistakes and we are subject to sin, he says, I have now given you an advocate, the mediator between God and man, that if by chance you sin, we need to confess that sin. I mean, there are some people teaching today, you don't need to confess your sins no longer once you confess Jesus because you are forgiven. Yeah, that's true. But I'd rather not take the chance. I'd rather ask God for forgiveness every time. I, wouldn't, I don't want to take the chance. And because he clearly says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just imagine that I sinned, did not confess it, but yet there are some unrighteous things in me. But look at the benefit of confessing the sin. If you confess the sin that you committed, he turns around, forgives you, cleanses you, and then cleanses you from everything that's not right in you. Yes. My God, that's a double whammy. That's a double whammy. Because sometimes we think we are right. The Bible says a man thinks he's right in his own eyes, but God weighs the heart and weighs the matter. So then we look at the debit. The debit and entry, to, and entry of something old in an account, that appears on the left side of the ledger. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. That's the debt we owe. We owe him. We owe him our lives because he died on the cross for each of us. So now let's consider areas we will have to give an account for. Idle words. Idle words. How many times we have said things and, 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 and you ask yourself, where did that come from? <laughs> Been there? Have you ever done that? And you said, wow. Matthew 12, 36, but I say unto you that every out of word, uh, every out of word, those men will speak. They shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. And the word idle means that it's unprofitable. You know, if you can't build a person up, don't say anything. Now, when is judgment? Is after death. Romans 14 and 12, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans 14, verses 12 through 10 says, So why do you condemn another believer? 
Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we all stand before the judgment seat of God. Uh, verse 11, it says, For the scripture says, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me, and every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. And when we look at those verses within that scripture, in that context, there were people that ate meat that were offered to idols, and some decided not to, you know. And so those that were convicted or felt condemned to eat it did not eat meat, you know, that was uh, given to idols. But then there were others that chose to. But they were condemning one another. Like today, we have vegetarians. Some people choose not to eat meat. Don't condemn them because they don't. If you want to eat your hog moths and chitlins, hey, get down with it. <laughs> get down with it. Because we know back in the day, that's what the, the black culture were raised on. You talking about my husband could make some good barbecue pig feet. You talking about good barbecue pig feet. But you know, don't condemn me because I wanted to eat pig feet. You see, so they were condemning each other. But, but, but the Lord, the, the, the scripture says, but all of us are going to have to appear before the Lord. Now, that's number one under A. Now, number two, there is an accountability and responsibility for spiritual leaders mandated by God himself. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Can you imagine that you only have to give an account for yourself? But as a pastor, I have to give an account for every person that sit up under the word of God that I'm teaching. And it's not only me, it is Minister Ophi, it is Pastor Kenny, it is Minister Sheila, it is Minister Stewart. We are going to be held for every word that we teach the people. And we have to make sure that we're teaching the whole council of the word. The whole council. Yes, the whole council. We would, you know, there are people in hell right now that they listened to someone that was teaching them things that they could do when the Bible strictly spoke and taught against it. And in hell, they lifted up their eyes. And yet, all they can see is that, but that preacher told me it was okay. That preacher said it was all right. But what is the word saying? What does the word say? The word said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There are people today that do not want to preach about sin. I am sorry that the mandate that was put on my life was to cry loud, spell not, and warn my people of their transgressions. There are preachers that do not want to talk about sin because they think they're going to hurt someone. I'd rather have a person be kind of put, you know, on edge to be convicted and not condemned that their lives, that their lives will be changed. Yes. That to tell them all a lot of good, good words and they're yet continuing it in, continuing in sin. Do you hear me by the Spirit? Yes. So that means that I'm going to be held responsible. We all will be held responsible. We, we, we can't just sugarcoat the word. People need truth. And it's the truth that you know will set you free. Truth alone will not set you free, but the truth that you know. Yes. We, so we're going to uh, confess our sins when we make a mistake. And the thing about it is that as a believer, we're not practicing sin and living in sin by practicing it. You understand what I'm saying? When you, when you are living in sin, it's when you're habitually living in sin, whether it's in fornication, adultery, or whatever. Those 17 tickets are there. All those tickets are there. But the main thing, what he is saying to us, 
if by chance, because we are in the flesh, because we do miss the mark. Sinning is nothing but missing the bull's eye. You miss the target. But he doesn't want us to habitually be in sin. The Bible clearly tells us that if you say that you have not sinned, you're a liar. All of us have sinned from the pulpit to the pews. But we are not living in habitual sin. So that's why Jesus says, look, I have an advocate. I have a mediator between God and man. So if by chance you sin, I've given provision and made provision for you. Know ye not that your body is the temple of God? Do you know that? He that destroys his body, his temple, uh, well, the, his body is destroying himself. Oh, my God. Are your accounts settled with God? So we see here uh, that James chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, and many of you should become, and, and, and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Now see, you and every lay person is accountable for their actions. They're going to have to give an account for what they have done and what they are doing. We as men of God, women of God, are going to have to give an account based on how we imparted the word to them. That's why the Bible says, study to show that self approved, right and divide in the word of truth. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Hallelujah. We have to write it. You know, we could, I could get it right here. I could say right now, there is no God. Because that is in the Bible. But the full verse says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So people will take the scripture to t and take it out of context to satisfy their belief system or whatever doctrine they're trying to teach or preach. So we have to give and teach the whole counsel of God because scripture interprets scripture. Scripture is of no private interpretation. It was breathed by God. Hallelujah. Every time we read the word, every time the word is being preached to you, you, you are being breathed on. And you have to receive that word and apply that word or your accounts settled. You know, we know our salvation account is settled. Ezekiel 33 and 6 says, But if the watchman sees the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. I don't want nobody's blood on my hand. Look, I don't want your blood on my hand. I'm going to tell you the truth. See, people want to hear that many ways to God. But that's not true. Jesus says, I am the way. And he says he's the only way to his father, his, to God. It's through him. But the world wants to know or wants to hear, oh, there are many paths to God. The devil is a liar. So we must teach the truth, the whole counsel of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So what do you want? Death or life? Today, choose ye whom you will serve. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we must give an account for our stewardship. Number B, Luke 16 and 2. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of that stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now, after the steward... Uh, was put out, he pondered as to what he could do that would help him to get his position back. So he visited all the debtors that owed his Lord money. The first debtor owed the Lord 100 measures of oil. 
in Acts 16, 6b, he says, and he said unto him, take that bill and sit down quickly and write 50. <laughs> then he said to another, how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take that bill and write four score, which was eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser yes. than the children of light. Yes. Now, we don't want the world to be wiser than us. No. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want that. We want to get our accounts settled. We want to seek God. We want to search his word, align up with his word. And so we see here that this was a steward that was kicked out of his position. And what is, this, what is stewardship? The position and duties of a steward, a person who acts as the surrogate of another or others, especially by managing property, financial affairs, and estate. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25. Remember that? That was also talking about stewardship. Uh, it says how this uh, tells of the master who he left his home to travel and he gave some of his servants, he gave one servant five and one two and then one. And the one that he gave five talents, he went and he invested yes. the money and earned five more. And the one that, uh, that received two talents, he went and invested those talents and earned two more. But the one that only received the one accused the master of being evil and that he didn't uh, what, reap where he sowed and strewed and all those kinds of things. He said, but you judged me. But because you didn't take advantage of investing that one talent, I'm going to take it from you and give it to the one that has ten. There are people sitting in the church with talents. Are you using your talents to the glory of God? Are you just sitting back? You're going to have to settle all your accounts. The accounts of do nothing. So we see here steps, steps to faithful obedience is number C. Faith believes what God says and acts in line with his word. Faith allows the believer to enter the rest into which God has called his people. It acknowledges the completed work of salvation while faithfully obeying every instruction from God. You know, we were talking this morning in a new membership class in reference to the fact that we've been hearing that Jesus is, is coming back We've been hearing it for years. But one day to the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as but one day. The Lord does not want any of us to perish. You know, would you allow, would you allow your child to run to the uh, oven, put their hands there and get burned? Or would you stop the child? How many people how many people can we stop them from going to hell by giving them the word of God? Do it in love. You don't do it all judgmental. You don't do it with a nastiness. But just let them know God loves you, but he doesn't love sin. He has set the standard. We didn't do it. Don't get mad with us. People get mad with the preacher when they preach truth. They get mad with the preacher when they preach truth. But it's our responsibility. We just saw in Hebrews that we are accountable for every person. I am accountable for every person that sit up under me because we have to give you truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's look at some ways by which we can show faithfulness unto the Lord through obedience. By unwavering, be unwavering in your belief in him. No matter what happens, we must stay strong and Im uh, immovable in our belief in him who made us, saved us, and called us his very own. B, we, we need to separate yourself from the world's thought patterns and practices. 
We can do that by applying Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means that in order for us not to get caught up in, into the practices and the thoughts of the world, we have to renew our minds every day in the word of God. Because we can be bombarded with what's going on in the world. Choose to do what is right all the time, even if it hurts. <laughs> Choose to do what is right and God-pleasing all the time. When we are faced with making decisions, choose the one that's not sinful and is pleasing to God. Even if it means being ridiculed and made fun of. Remember, the Lord Jesus himself was persecuted. And this means that we should be prepared and willing to face some persecution as well. Yeah. Obey what God said in his word. The Lord Jesus said that if you love him, then, should you, do, then you should do what he says. John 14 and 15. Love your neighbors in obedience to God. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, and the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you, you were doing it unto me. Those that were asking, you know, what did I see you hungry and I fed you? When did I do that? But the time that you took groceries to a mother, that her cupboards were bare. Hallelujah. And you blessed that mother. Yes. The time that you saw, you took the time to encourage a person that seemed to have been not themselves on the street corner to let them know that Jesus loved them. Hallelujah. The time that you took to go to the prisons yes. and hear that clinker behind those iron doors to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you would say, but when did I do? But those are the times when you took the time out, when you preferred others be before yourself. Hallelujah. So now let's look at some uh, activities that goes on with bank accounts, especially our checking account. We make deposits. Deposit was made. Forgot to record it. And reconciling our statement, we forget to record. Uh, check information in the register that throws your account off. Made purchases with our debit cards and forgot to record the purchases. The banker keeps accurate records. Just as our records are kept accurate in the book of life. In our account of forgiveness, we recorded that we forgave that person that hurt us. Yet when we see them, we experience funny feelings. And we never made note of that in our account. Therefore, we need to release and surrender that hurt to the Holy Spirit and forgive not based on a feeling, but on a fact, which is a fact by faith. The same faith it took you to receive the finished work of the cross is the fa same faith you must use to forgive your brother or sister that hurt you and it could be a wife, it could be a husband, it could be your child. You have to forgive them by faith. The same faith that it took you to receive Jesus, to believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection, is the same faith you must use to forgive others. Now, in, in your, uh, uh, in your uh, account, in all joy account, in your account, in all joy account, you deposited lots of joy for moments in your account. <laughs> but in the midst of your worst trials, you started feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> Thinking you were the only person experiencing what you were going through and began to murmur and complain. Murmuring and complaining is what kept Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. So we know that that doesn't help. Hallelujah. Are all of your accounts settled with God? If we're going to be better in 10 days, we need to let go 
and let God settle all of our accounts. Are your accounts settled with God? Are all of your accounts settled with God? I see, I, might, I, I created some spiritual accounts, you know. You may have your own. You, you can make your own accounts. Is there anything, that you, uh, account that you have from the time you were a child and things were said to you that didn't build you up but tarred you down, that you have carried, recorded in your account? You have to let it go. If you've been abused, been violated, and in that account... The enemy just wants you just to dwell on it. You have to give that account to the Holy Spirit and forgive God. Forgive the people and let, Lord, let the Lord work in your life that you can forgive them by faith. So, today, this morning, we want you to consider all of your accounts and make sure that they are settled. And if there's anyone listening this morning, whether in the congregation or over the airways, you want your account of salvation to be settled. Today is the day. All you have to do is believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection work of Jesus. He took on our sin that we might have life. He became poor that we might become rich. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So pray this prayer with me. I confess that I am a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Come and live on the inside of me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Be my Lord. Be my master. Be my keeper. And be my friend. And Lord, I thank you today that my account of salvation is settled with you in heaven today. And all my other accounts that I need to deal with, my account on forgiveness, my account at all joy account, my account of benevolence, and my account of the love of God that's shared abroad in my heart. So everybody standing to their feet. Let's thank God for those that have accepted Jesus. Hallelujah. We rejoice for you. Hallelujah. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Are all your accounts settled with God? Yes. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, that our account has been settled, the major account has been settled in heaven. But there are other accounts that we deal with that we use as an analogy with our various checking accounts and how we make deposits and how we forget to record them and how in our account sometimes we think we have forgiven until we are faced again with individuals or circumstances. So Lord, today, this morning, we're asking that you would give us the courage that we need to trust you and to forgive and to work on every account and make sure that we let go and let God and give it to you, for you are our savior. You are our shield and buckler. You are our source of strength, and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And let God's people say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Is there anyone that desires prayer before I sit down? Before anyone desires prayer? Do you have an account that needs to be settled? <laughs> Hallelujah. All your accounts are settled. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a praise.